Hi, I'm Karen Hickman, a professor in the Department of Natural Resource Ecology and Management at Oklahoma State University. One of the features uh, that is associated with a healthy grassland in the southern Great Plains is periodic fire. And today we're going to be viewing some of the effects of lack of appropriate fire. In the background uh, behind me is a, an example of an extreme wildfire. Um, apparently it started yesterday and it, apparently it's run about, I think it's probably now nine miles from where it started. It started, they think, with a hay baler. And ecologically, um, the reason why it's running so far is because of the, the land management practices or the absence of proper land management practices. The landowners here have not controlled for eastern red cedar, and that just increases the um, severe wildfire threat. And so luckily there's no structures that I think that have been involved, and hopefully all of the firefighters are safe. But what's happening now is we have a severe drought going on um, in which we really don't have a lot of soil moisture. And so we're burning here now in June, and there's in this region of um, the Red Hills, there's been evidence that uh, other land managers have stated that in a drought condition, a uh, wildfire that comes through can have um, pretty significant effects on production and the, the um, negative effect on the plant community. Holy crap, okay, we're coming over there. Bye. My mom and brother-in-law are over at the uh, oil well um, site on her property watching it. So I didn't even know she was over there. So we'll maybe go over there and chat with her about it. You don't want a fire with this severity. This is, this is awful. <laughs> this is what I've been saying was gonna happen if you didn't burn. I know that. Right. That, so where Brady's had laid down all their cedar trees? No. It, no, where they had, it just raced across there. Yeah. And then they had that oil well road, so where the oil well was up there. Yeah. On top, they had that road going below it. They put a, like, three lanes of uh, bulldozers along there. It popped over that. We've moved north from the last location we were. There's a house over here that actually where my, uh, my grandmother was born and uh, my great uncle lives there. And as it moves there, they've, they've done a lot of um, preparation on the, north, the south side of it. So they've done some tillage, but they have a lot of cedar trees that are around it. And the volunteer fire departments that are around here are really concerned about that structure. So they're gonna do everything they can to prevent it. They're actually, they're moving right now, so it looks like they're moving some water um, along the road. And they'll go over there and try to start doing that. And he just returned. And I think he's trying to place the water um, kind of strategically on one of the only structures that is in the line of the fire, and that's what he's doing. He's getting ready to drop it on that, near that house. was a gopher man. Uh, see the bark on uh, the pale bark that's off that tree over there? I've seen that before and it's where the uh, phloem heats up and it gets so hot it just pops the bark off and sometimes you can go over and get a whole piece of bark that's come off the tree. So in the Great Plains grasslands, we can typically see two different types of fire. A prescribed fire that is used to maintain the, um, the health of 
the rangeland and the grassland system and prevent invasion by woody species. But we can also see what we've seen today, the, um, the second type of fire, and that's wildfires. Wildfires that can be started um, accidentally through arson, um, just totally unintentionally. Today's fire apparently was an accidental fire and the devastation that has occurred from this is not, so far there hasn't been any structural damage um, uh, occur, but it's very difficult to replace the native vegetation, the native mature cottonwoods that are going to be many times killed as that wildfire proceeds through many of the canyons that are present in this region of the Red Hills. So proper management through prescribed fire and controlling of eastern red cedar possibly could have limited the intensity and severity of the fire that we're seeing that we've seen today and hopefully in the future proper range management techniques will incorporate not only proper grazing but also uh, management with fire.